In 2020, I thought about starting a YouTube channel where I would catch child predators and expose them. Since a lot of people were starting to do this at the time, I decided it would be fun to join in. For those who don't know what this is, I would basically pose as an underage boy or girl, usually anywhere between ages 9 to 13, and catfish creeps into meeting up. Since I always chose a public place to meet, for my safety, I'd usually set up my stings at Walmart, since it was a short drive away. I remember chatting with some creepy guy who went by the name Adam, who was very insistent on meeting up with my decoy. I offered to meet him at Walmart so that I could expose him and let the world know that this guy was a child predator. I asked if he could meet at 7pm, but he said he could only meet at 9pm or later, so I agreed to meet him at 9. I arrived at the Walmart at about quarter to nine with my friend who would film the sting. As I texted Adam, we agreed that we'd meet in the back corner of the store, by the clothing section. At almost exactly 9 p.m., I ran into the man claiming to be Adam. Doing my usual gig, I stopped him and explained to him that he had been talking to me the entire time and that this was a sting. Like every child predator I've ever caught, he denied that he ever came into contact with this 10-year-old boy I posed as and that he was just here to shout. As a part of my routine, I showed him the chat logs, which were very graphic and vulgar, and he became extremely agitated and angry. I told him he can chat with me if he wants, but if he chose not to talk, I'd call the police and hand over the information to them, which I would do regardless. He decided he would play dumb and began to leave, so we followed him. As we passed the checkout registers, he pulled out his phone and began texting someone. I kept reminding Adam that if he ran from us, we would involve the police and it was in his best interest to talk to us. He kept ignoring us and began walking to what we thought would be his car in the parking lot so that we could get the plates and notify the police. As we kept walking, I began to get a strange feeling that he wasn't going to his car since we had already passed almost every car in the parking lot. Suddenly, a van parked in the very back corner of the parking lot turned on its lights and began driving directly towards us. Surprised by this, we stopped and watched as the doors flung open and Adam got in the back of the van with what looked to be at least three other men. I waited for the van to turn out of the parking lot to get the license plate, but it was covered in tape. My friend and I were pretty shaken up by this event and never decided to go public with it on our channel, not knowing who or how dangerous these people were. It definitely seemed like there was an organized plan to abduct the decoy we set up online. We went to the police with the video and information, but no arrests have been made. I think it's pretty safe to say that we witnessed a potential child trafficking abduction. That night still gives me chills just thinking about it. I take my five-year-old son almost everywhere with me since his father is always working. We had just gotten back from a family wedding when one evening I took my son with me to Walmart because we needed to pick up groceries. We had pretty much picked up everything we needed, except for the frozen stuff which I strategically get last so it doesn't go bad and melt. I remember specifically walking down one of the main aisles towards the freezer section when I turned around and realized my son was gone. I'm sure anyone who is a parent could imagine the panic I felt. I left the cart I was pushing and instantly backtracked everywhere I had just been. I couldn't find him. I ran through the store yelling for his name, but he was nowhere to be found. Some of the employees asked me what was happening and I explained that I had just lost my son in the store. They tried to calm me down, but I was distraught. After a couple minutes, many people in the store, including non-employees, were calling my son's name and helping me look for him. The shift manager made an announcement over the PA system alerting everyone that there was a missing five-year-old boy with short, dark hair wearing light-up sketchers and a blue Pokemon t-shirt. By now, everyone in the entire store stopped what they were doing and were helping me look, but no one could find him. Suddenly, I heard a commotion towards the bathroom area on the other side of the store, and I sprinted as fast as I possibly could. Some guy was yelling across the store telling me that they found my son outside the bathroom and that he was okay. I felt so relieved and hugged him completely emotional and crying. Even though I was glad I found him, I knew I had to use this lesson as a parenting moment to tell him that he can't wander off and go to the bathroom without telling me. As I told him this on the car ride home, his response sent shivers down my spine. He told me that a man came up to him and offered to buy him a toy, so he held hands with him and walked to the toy section. After picking out a toy, the man walked my son to the checkout and they stood in line waiting to buy it. My son even mentioned that the man wanted to go outside and open the toy with him, but as they were just about to buy it, the announcement of the missing boy with his exact description came over the PA system and he grabbed my son and took him to hide inside the restroom. While everyone was helping me search for him, the man must have snuck out of the store, leaving my son in the bathroom. Learning this felt sickening, knowing that the man clearly had terrible intentions of abducting my son and doing whatever evil, disgusting thing he was planning on doing. 
It was easily the scariest day of my life as a mom, and I just ask that all parents who hear this can be extra careful and vigilant of their children, especially in public. This happened when I was in high school, during my summer break going into my senior year. I was never very fond of my job as a stalker, but I didn't have many other options for work in the area at the time. The Walmart I worked at was located in a pretty high crime area, and police would often be called since a lot of people would get caught stealing. It was like any normal night of work when I was finishing up my last few tasks when a couple approached me, asking if we carried a certain pair of shoes. Now I worked in Derry, so I wasn't able to answer their question. I told them I could radio over to someone in the department so they could help, but they said it wasn't a big deal. The man started asking me if we had any deals on milk and a few other questions that seemed to be strange to ask. As he was asking me these questions, I could see the woman out of the corner of my eye walking into the employee's only door. Realizing this guy was trying to distract me, I told him to stay there as I went to get the woman out of the back. Almost instantly, I felt the guy tap my shoulder and I turned around to see he was holding a knife to my stomach. He told me if I went back there he would stab me and that I needed to stay there and not say a word. I was pretty much alone in the back of the store, and most of my coworkers were up front getting ready to clock out and head home since the store was closing at 9. The man then went to the back room where the woman was, so I was left standing there, shocked, not knowing what to do. I definitely wasn't about to risk my life to stop a couple thieves. It wasn't in my pay grade. I stood there in the same spot for at least five minutes, pretending like I was taking inventory. After standing around, the door opened and the couple emerged from the back room and began approaching me. The man grabbed me and pushed me up against the wall, telling me he was going to kill me because I called the cops on them. I was so confused because I made sure not to do anything like that because my job as a Walmart stalker wasn't worth my life and I tried to explain that to him, but it was like talking to a wall. I asked him where he saw police and he said they saw multiple cop cars circling around the back of the building and that I was just playing stupid. It wasn't rare for a cop to patrol the building at night given the high crime area, but multiple cars patrolling the parking lot wasn't something they typically do. I had no way of making these people believe me that I didn't call the cops. They were furious at me. They grabbed me and walked me back through the employees only doors as I noticed the pile of food and clothes they assembled by the door, probably planning on loading it into the car through the bag and taking off. Just as we walked back and entered the room, the door swung open again and multiple policemen with guns drawn began screaming to drop the knife. Completely shocked, I sprinted away from the couple as they dropped their knives and got arrested. I was so grateful that the police showed up and saved me. It turns out my manager happened to see me standing around not doing anything on the security cameras and sat there for a couple minutes, probably mad at me, until she noticed the man pulled a knife on me. She called the police who happened to be very close and it ended up saving my life.